I want to tell you a little bit about Busboys and Poets and tell you a little bit about my story. Busboys and Poets is a gathering place and a restaurant, but it's also a place where racial and cultural connections are consciously uplifted. It's a place where art, culture, and politics come together and intentionally collide with one another. It's a place to take a deliberate pause and feed your mind, body, and soul. We believe by creating such a space, you can actually begin to transform a corner of a city, the city itself, and indeed the world. So I want to take you back and tell you my beginning. My family came to this country in 1966 from Iraq. We came here to Arlington. We lived in Arlington, Virginia. And of course, the first things you do when you're a 10-year-old boy is you have to be enrolled in school. So we got enrolled in school, and I remember filling out forms, and the forms would have on them white, black, or other. I didn't think I was on the white team, <laughs> and I wasn't on the black team, and no 10-year-old wants to be the other. So I left my forms blank. So then, a few days later, I'm walking down the hallway, and I noticed the white girls didn't want to have anything to do with me because being racially ambiguous was not a cool thing to be in 1966. And the black girls would be whispering, I think he's high yellow. <laughs> and I had no idea what that meant. So <laughs> I ran home, looked up the dictionary, and there wasn't Google or Wikipedia or anything like that. And I look it up, and it, it, there's no such thing as high yellow in the dictionary. At the time, I went to my mother. I said, they're saying I'm high yellow. What does that mean? She said, just eat your hummus and be quiet, you know? <laughs> so, so two years later, the assassination of Martin Luther King happens. And the world turned upside down. There were people in the streets. There were lots of burning of buildings and breaking of windows and looting and shootings and all kinds of things were happening. And I remember in the middle of the night sleeping and listening to the sirens throughout the night. It was a very scary time in America. And I realized that this race thing is not just something you check off on a box or you whisper about in the hallways and giggle, but it's very real. It's something very serious. Race determines where you live, who you associate with, where you sit in the cafeteria. It determines the kind of job you get and where you work. It also determined who you married. In 1966, when my family moved to this country, it was illegal for a black person and a white person to live together and marry in the state of Virginia. Probably most of you in this room who were born after 1967, you might think that's ancient times. But it wasn't until 2001 that Alabama took that law off its books. So it's not so ancient after all. So this is the America that I came to, and this is my exposure to race in America. So 50 years later, after the Civil Rights Act, and all the changes that took place, it's a very different country. It has changed a lot, but in many ways it hasn't. Right here in the nation's capital, we have a very divided city, a city of haves and have-nots, a city of rich and poor, the city of black and white. That was my impetus behind starting to think about the idea of building Busboys and Poets to create that melting pot, that place that everybody becomes attracted to. Whether you're on this side of the river or that side of the river, this would be the place that you want to come to. So I started looking around to see where would that place be. And I looked at the U Street Corridor because that was a really deep, had a lot of deep history in it. The U Street Corridor, for some of you that are from the city or may not know, is the place that used to be called Black Broadway. In fact, when the first sparks happened after the assassination of Martin Luther King in the city, they took place at the corner of 14th and U Street. 
that was the area where the, the birthplace of the Harlem Renaissance began. It was a place where jazz and music and poetry and books and all kinds of exciting things were taking place here in this city, yet the city was segregated. So I looked around in that area and I saw it had gone really down after 1968. In fact, if you tell anyone 14th and U Street, even 10 or 15 years ago, they think you're crazy being there. In fact, we grew up around here and we were not allowed to go on 14th Street. That's not a good place to be. In fact, my mother still thinks I shouldn't, you know, that I'm on 14th Street. She complains, <laughs> why are you on 14th Street? Oh. Anyway, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very exciting part of the city. Obviously, a lot has changed. And I was driving around looking for the perfect spot to put busboys and poets, and I saw buildings going up, one called the Ellington, named after Duke Ellington, one called the Langston Lofts, named after Langston Hughes. And I noticed there wasn't a lot of connection to the history and, the, and the, really the deep roots of that community coming out from that ground. In fact, in the Ellington, there was a tanning salon. So you have a tanning salon in a building called the Ellington on a street called Black Broadway. <laughs> Interesting business plan. So that, that went out. Uh, uh, I, I, I think it only lasted about six months. Um, but anyway, I turned the corner and saw a building called the Langston Lofts. That's when I knew this was the moment to put some place named after Langston Hughes. And for some of you that may know, uh, Busboys and Poets in Honor is named in honor of Langston Hughes. He worked as a busboy while writing poetry here in Washington, D.C. It's a beautiful story. He worked as a busboy at the Wardman Park Hotel. And one night, a very famous poet by the name of Vacha Lindsay happens to be dining there. And the young Langston Hughes, who was working at that time as a busboy, slipped some of his poetry next to Vacha Lindsay's plate. He was a entrepreneur and wanted to have his poetry put out there. Vasha Lindsay read some of the poetry, nodded approvingly, and the next day, Langston Hughes, on his way to work, picked up the newspaper, opened it up and said that Vasha Lindsay had just discovered a busboy poet. And Langston Hughes got to the hotel. There was a lot of paparazzi and people taking pictures of him. It was a very exciting time for him, and that sort of launched his career. He became known as the busboy poet. And of course, the rest is history. Most of you probably have never heard of Vacha Lindsay, but many of you probably heard of Langston Hughes. Interesting how her, the history takes uh, funny turns and twists. So I opened up the place, and I started setting it up to try to unearth some of that spirits under the ground, the spirits of poetry, the spirits of art, the spirits of music. And I put all this art on the walls, and I did a mural as well that depicted the struggles of the civil rights movement. And you know, if you work in business in D.C., there's always a lot of time to wait while permits are being processed. <laughs> and so I'm sitting waiting every single night, so I'm sitting one night, one afternoon actually, and the two elderly black women came to the window, and they were trying to peer through. And I ran out, and I pulled them in, I said, come on in, let me show you around. And they gave me that look. I'm sure they were wondering if I was high yellow. <laughs> but, but they looked around, and I started showing them around the place. And I took him to the back room, and I opened the door, and they saw the mural. And the mural had some Langston Hughes poetry. It had iconic photos of the civil rights struggles, all kinds of civil rights icons. And the poetry of Langston Hughes, my favorite poem, Let America Be America Again. And it went like this on the top of the, of the uh, mural. It says, let America be America again. Let it be the dream it used to be. Let it be the pioneer on the plane seeking a home where he himself is free. America was never America to me. Let America be the dream the dreamers dreamed. Let it be the strong land of love, where neither kings connive nor tyrants scheme, that no man be crushed by one above. It's a beautiful poem, and it's written at the top of the mural. The woman walked in, I turned around wondering whether they liked it, and one of them had a tear coming down her eyes. And I knew at that moment that I had created a place where truly racial and cultural connections were being uplifted, a place where art, culture, and politics will indeed come together and collide, a place that people will come to and take a deliberate pause 
and feed their mind, body, and soul. And I did believe at that moment that by creating such a place, we can indeed change the world. Thank you. Thank you.